Now she gets to hunt, really be part of a pack. You can tell she likes it. Yeah, I never thought about that. Whatever else, this is boring. No, it is not. How to evolve ladies and gentlemen. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Evolve Alpha which has been out now for maybe 48, 72 hours and actually it's been extended until the 4th of November, 12pm Pacific time and the main reason for that is because they had a cock up with the PS4 version of the Alpha where I think they had some server issues or deployment issues with the Alpha on that platform so they've extended it to everybody now they've fixed those issues with the PlayStation 4. And for those of you that have been playing the Evolve Alpha over the weekend, I'm pretty sure you're all going to be happy with that extended playtime. This is one of the best games that I've played so far, and I'm really, really looking forward to what Turtle Rock have in store for us in the future with this game. It honestly is one of the best games that I've played in 2014, and no doubt will be one of the best games to land in 2015. But, without further ado, let's figure out how we evolve. We're going to have a look at the four classes that you can play as the Hunter today, looking at some of the benefits, some of the strengths and weaknesses of each class, and basically which one's the best for you, and whichever one you do end up with, how best to utilise it. And so first up, let's start with the gameplay in the background. I'm playing as the Assault Hunter at the moment, which is basically a heavy firepower foot soldier, depending on which one you get. You're going to have some extremely powerful weapons at your disposal, and that's about it. <laughs> when you look at these two different soldiers in essence they have extremely powerful weapons a solo shield protector basically only protecting them and not the other players and basically what are a couple of trip mines for taking out the AI besides the monster and really you have to rely on the other players in your team to keep you protected most of the time the shield is sort of a one-time use and it has a very slow recharge you're going to have extremely heavy firepower weapons that are going to be able to do some massive damage to the monster, but you are going to need to retreat once in a while to make sure those weapons are powered up accordingly. In the background, I'm playing as Markov, and he's one of the two different assault players that we currently know about that are going to be in the game. And his primary weapon is an assault rifle, it's an electronic one, and it's mainly there to deal sort of sufficient damage while you're sort of medium to long range away from the monster. But the closer you get, the more chance you have at using your secondary, which is like this lightning pulse gun, where if you're in close proximity to the monster, you just sort of aim at it, click the fire button, and this beam of lightning will connect to the monster and start dealing some heavy damage while you're in close quarters. The only downside of it is that you have to be very close to the monster in order to use it. So you do have to be very careful and that's where your defensive shield comes in handy. Next up is the Trapper class and I happen to think that this is probably the most important class in the Alpha right now. As the name suggests, your main role is to keep the monster fixated in one position, allowing the team that you're playing with to deal the damage that it needs to to get the monster to die. I think the coolest thing about the Trapper is the ability to basically create this arena over the top of all the players and the monster. Basically creating like this glass electric dome doesn't allow the monster to leave that area. Of course you're keeping it centralised with all the players inside that dome for a short period of time and it basically stops the monster from escaping away from heavy firepower. So if you're in that dome and you're playing as the assault guy or the support guy and the support guy has some really, really powerful weapons, then you can deal some massive damage while that's happening. Alongside that dome ability, there are two different soldiers, as there are with Assault. You have Maggie and Griffin. These two guys have slightly different abilities. Maggie has a primary, which is an Assault pistol, which doesn't sound very powerful, but then you do have this little sidekick called Daisy, which is basically like a monster dog that follows you around and, and can do extra damage as an AI person, which I think is really cool. And then Griffin has obviously the harpoon gun that both of these soldiers have, which trap the monster in a certain location. And the monster can't go any further without breaking the cord of the harpoon. It can't run any further. Again, another 
reason for trapping it in that single location. Griffin's primary weapon though is a Gauss SMG, which sounds really cool. I haven't had a chance to play with him yet. Sounds That sounds really dirty, but I haven't had a chance to play with this soldier in the game yet. It sounds really cool, and I hope I get a chance to play it before the alpha runs out. But as I said, this is one of the most key classes within the game, and if you are playing as the Trapper, you have a lot of responsibility. The third class is the Medic. Now, pretty obvious that this one is fairly important. You're there to keep your teammates alive. You're also there to try and focus as much of the firepower on the monster as possible and you have a lot of different weapons that enable you to do that. First of all one of the medic players is called Val and she's one of the female soldiers in the game but she has this extremely high powered sniper rifle that creates a sort of weak point on any of the sort of AI or the monster that she's shot at and that then creates a focal point for the other players in your team it actually highlights it on the screen and any shots that hit that same point that Val's hit with her sniper rifle during that period of time does double damage to the monster or the AI, which is a really cool bit of kit. The other medic, he's called Lazarus, he has the ability to go super stealth mode and go invisible, which sounds like a really cool trait. Basically, if you're in trouble, put yourself into invisibility mode, jump yourself away, drop some health down or throw some health out to the rest of your team, you can get yourself back into the fight. Lending itself even more to tracking the monster, which is a really cool thing if you're the trapper, because if you can see where the monster's been or where it's going, it's really important that you get there and try and stop the monster moving any further. Val has the ability with like a, a tranquilizer gun, or I'm, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but if you shoot the monster with it, it's basically a tracer dart. I, I think that's actually what it's called. <laughs> but if you shoot the monster with that, then it will show up the monster on the map, sort of through walls very hazily and things like that. So you've got a general idea of where the monster is heading and what they're going to be doing. And as I said, for the trapper, that's a really important tool there. Because you can see where it's going and you can stop it in its tracks. And the final class, support. Now I've left this one to last because it is the one that has the most firepower. And generally, I think it's the one that people are going to want to play more often than not. Now just like the other three classes, the support soldiers do have two different variants. We have Bucket and Hank, and of course they have their own special abilities too. If you're playing as Bucket, you basically get this guided missile launcher which deals massive amounts of damage to head-on shots to the monster. And then when you're moving with Hank, he has the ability to basically call in devastating mortar strikes that can rain down on the monster. The only slight disadvantage to these things is you pretty much need to hit the monster dead on with both of these things to deal the damage. If you don't, then you're only going to be inflicting damage on your own players. Because they're so powerful, Turtle Rock have made the decision to basically have team killing here where you're going to do more damage to your friendly players if they're in that location where you're firing these heavy weapons. So it really is important that you fire these directly at the monster or as close as you can so you don't inflict damage on your own teammates. So, those are your four classes, and that's how to use them. Make sure you do work as a team, though, and you try and stick together as much as you can. That's really important, because all of the roles do integrate very well with each other. I have to say, the Trapper is the most important class, but you've got the Assault Guy and the Support Guy dealing really heavy damage, and you've got the Medic there as a backup soldier who's always giving out health to the team. If you can gel well as a four-person team, you're going to do really well in this game. But that is the end of the video guys, so thank you very much for watching. If you've learned something today, let me know down in the comments and give me a thumbs up too, that would be really appreciated. But as I say, thank you very much for watching. My name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.